parental leave for solo parents or the solo parental leave. The basis is Republic Act 82, 8972. So coverage, those who are covered by the uh, benefit. The, the coverage is based on the definition of who a solo parent is. So under the law, parental leave for solo parents is granted to any solo parent or individual who is left alone with the responsibility of parenthood due to. So there are many circumstances or situations where an, an individual is left alone with the responsibility of parenthood. Take note before we discuss all of this that usually but not always, it's a single uh, biological par parent. However, there are certain circumstances where it is the head of the family or the eldest sibling or an aunt or an uncle. So it's not always the biological parent. So having said that, let's discuss who are the ones considered as a solo parent. So these are the circumstances. So they, these are the ones who are left alone with the responsibility of parenthood due to, number one, giving birth as a result of rape or as used by the law, other crimes against chastity. Number two, death of spouse. Number three, spouse is detained or is serving sentence for a criminal conviction for at least one year. Number four, physical and or mental in incapacity of spouse as certified by a public medical practitioner. Number five, legal separation or de facto separation from spouse for at least one year provided that he or she is entrusted with the custody of the children. So take note here, legal separation or separation in, in fact. What is contemplated here is that the uh, legal husband and wife or those who are ma legally married are no longer living together. But they have not yet annulled their marriage or they have not seek nullity of their marriage. So they are still legally married but they are no longer uh, living together as husband and wife that is the concept of legal separation number six declaration of nullity or annulment of marriage as decreed by a court or by a church provided again that he or she is entrusted with the custody of the children so the main difference with five and six is that in number six the marriage has been dissolved or terminated or uh, or cancelled or not annulled by virtue of a court decree. Number seven, abandonment of spouse for at least one year. Now, in case of abandonment, uh, take thought it's different from number five, although there's somewhat similarity. The point there being is that in abandonment, the uh, parent left with the child was not given any information or notice as to the current circumstances of the other uh, parent. I mean, uh, the other parent just simply got up and left without any information as to his or her whereabouts. In number five, for legal separation, usually they know the whereabouts of the other uh, person. But in number seven, it's totally zero knowledge. Number eight, unmarried father or mother who has preferred to keep and rear his or her child or children instead of having others care for them or give them up to a welfare institution. So almost the same situation with, with the earlier ones. Number nine, any other person who solely provides parental care and support to a child or children provided that he or she is duly licensed as a foster parent. Okay, So this is where the uh, foster parents from DSWD comes in. So they are duly licensed as a foster parent by the Department of Social Welfare and Development or DSWD or duly appointed legal guardian by a court. So we have, legal guardians are also included in this list or enumeration. And number 10, any family member who was assumed, who assumes responsibility of head of family as a result of the death, death, abandonment, disappearance, or prolonged absence of the parents or the solo parent. Provided that such abandonment, disappearance, or prolonged absence lasts for at least one year. So the concept of head of a family is very flexible. It can be the eldest sibling 
or not necessarily a sibling, it could be the second sibling or third sibling. But the point is, there's that one person who stands as the, the head or figurehead of the family. It's also possible that this can be an uncle, an auntie, it could be a cousin, it could be the grandparent, or whoever. Okay, but the point there being is he or she is a family member and he or she uh, represents the family as its head. Now, definition of terms. Parental leave shall mean leave benefits granted to a solo parent to enable him or her to perform parental duties and responsibilities where physical presence is required. So using of the leave credits should be or related to the parental duties of the solo parent. Now, the child contemplated herein refers to a person living with and dependent on the solo parent for support. Now, generally, the he or she, the child, meaning is unmarried, unemployed, and below 18 years of age. Or it's also possible that even if the person is 18 years old and above, but it, he or she is not capable or incapable of self-support because he or she is mentally and or physically challenged. So the child could put it here is not always going to be under 18, but it's also possible that the uh, person is above 18, perhaps let's say 30 years old, 40 years old, because of him or her being incapable of giving self-support because he or she is mentally or physically challenged, uh, it's still possible to be classified as a child for purposes of solo parent. The parental leave benefit. The parental leave, in addition to leave privileges under existing law, shall be for seven work days every year, okay, with full pay, consisting of basic salary and mandatory allowances fixed by the regional wage board, if Amy provided that his or her pay shall not be less than the mandated minimum wage. So as I was comparing earlier regarding in relation to the uh, paternity leave benefit, this is the correct way to word the uh, benefit. It should be work days to be favorable to the concerned employee. In the paternity leave benefit, it's, classy, it's worded as calendar days, which is not always going to be beneficial to the employee because usually uh, for purposes of paternity leave, the usage is, is, is in uh, consecutive days. So the last two days usually falls on a weekend and it might not be uh, advantageous to the uh, male uh, worker or employee. Uh, so earlier I mentioned 10 days for 10 work days for parental leave. So it's not 10 days, but it's actually seven work days for the parental leave benefit. Now conditions for entitlement. A solo parent employee shall be entitled to parental leave provided that, number one, he or she has rendered at least one year of service, whether it continues or broken. Again, every time you see the word broken, it contemplates the inclusion or part of the counting would include uh, the days, weeks, or months when the employee uh, did not work, maybe because for legitimate reasons, such as he or she might have availed of a maternity leave, other day benefits might have been in an accident, in an illness, and so on and so forth. The point is, it will be one full uh, calendar year counted or reckoned from his or her first day of work or from day one. Number two, he or she has notified his or her employer that he or she will avail himself or herself of it within a reasonable period of time. Now again, for this purposes here, the notification or application the employer should come out with a company policy so that everyone concerned would be able to know as to what would be the reasonable time period within which to file in order to manage expectations between the employer and employee. And number three, he or she has rendered, uh, he or she has presented to his or her employer a solo parent identification card, which may be obtained from the WD office. Okay of the city or municipality where he or she resides. So they have to file an application in order to avail of this card. Now, um, with respect to the leave credits, it is non-convertible to cash. In the event that the parental leave is not availed of, it shall not be convertible to cash. Because again, the whole purpose of using the leave credit is to be able to assist the child with respect to any parental duties and responsibilities such as going to the school or um, going with the child for purposes of medical examination and the like. Unless, of course, it's specifically agreed upon 
agreed on previously. So if there is a favorable employee stipulation as to its conversion, if not used, then that will be followed. Uh, it can be via a employment contract, collective bargaining agreement, or other employment uh, agreement. Credit, crediting of existing leave. If there is an existing or similar leave benefit under a company policy or a collective bargaining agreement, the same shall, of course, be credited as such. If the same, however, is greater than the seven working days provided for under the law, the greater benefit shall prevail. Again, any favorable employee stipulation, particularly if it deals with labor standards or benefits, it shall be the one that will be followed or will govern. Emergency or contingency leave provided under company policy or collective bargaining agreement shall not be credited as compliance with the parental leave or provided, provided for under the law. So take note that there should always be a separate uh, seven workday leave credits, seven days uh, with full pay leave credits for purposes of solo parents. It cannot be mixed, credited, or accounted or included in any other leave, particularly those that would provide for emergency or leave credits should be separate. Letter G, termination of the benefit. A change in the status or circumstance of the parent claiming the benefit under the law such that he or she is no longer left alone with the responsibility of parenthood shall terminate his or her eligibility for this benefit. Of course, this is a matter of uh, full disclosure on the part of the concerned uh, employee. However, the employer may come out with policies and regulations to double check, verify, and see to it that the status is the same or if there are changes, then there would be also corresponding adjustments in the uh, benefits extended to the covered employee. Protection against work discrimination. So no employer shall discriminate against any solo parent or employee with respect to terms and conditions of employment on account of simply being a solo parent. Okay, so it's already difficult enough to be a solo parent. There should not be any form of discrimination in the workplace just because he or she is a, is a solo parent. So long as the employee is, being, is able to do work or uh, be able to perform well, then he or she should be equally given the opportunity for any uh, upward movement or any reward benefit or bonus that is applicable.